so stability chambers are designed to maintain certain temperature and humidity and again there are allowable tolerances for temperature and humidity but the moment if your stability chamber is not able to maintain the specified temperature requirement or humidity then you can say that now there is excursion for temperature and humidity has occurred so how to handle the excursion in temperature and humidity when your stability chamber has loaded with the samples before we talk about the excursion let us first understand how much is the allowable tolerances for temperature and humidity according to the ICH as well as WHO so in case if you your product is intended to be stored at room temperature and if your long term storage condition is 2560 3065 or 3075 in that case the allowable tolerances for temperature is plus or minus 2 degree celsius and for humidity it is plus or minus 5% rh even though if 3065 is your intermediate condition the allowable tolerances stands the same in case if your product is intended to store in the refrigerator means at 5 degrees celsius then the allowable tolerance for temperature is plus or minus 3 degrees celsius in case if your product is intended to store in the freezer that is minus 20 degrees celsius then the allowable tolerance for temperature is how much plus or minus 5 degrees celsius so this is with respect to the allowable tolerances for temperature and humidity wherever applicable according to the ICH and WHO and in case if uh, your product is uh, charged for accelerated condition that is 40 degree celsius and 75 percent RH again the allowable tolerances for temperature will be plus or minus 2 degree celsius and for humidity it is plus or minus 5 percent RH so how much is the excursion allowed how much is the allowed excursion when we talk about the stability study so if you look at the ICH guideline that is uh, Q1AR2 that particular guideline has never spoken about the allowable excursion so I means how long maybe in terms of hours how many hours the chamber can be allowed to go out of the order there is no as such guidance provided by the ICH but when you but when you look at the WHO stability guideline you will find some reference over there and according to WHO the effect of excursions due to equipment failure should be assessed addressed and reported if judged to affect stability result excursions that exceed the defined tolerances for more than 24 hours should be described in the study report and their effect must be assessed so by looking at the WHO guideline you can say that the excursions for 24 hours is allowed right the excursions for 24 hours is allowed but still what guidance is say that you need to assess and address the the possible impact because of the excursions it's very important are short-term environmental changes due to opening the doors of the stability facility is accepted because to withdraw the sample to incubate the sample you may have to open and close the chambers and it can happen for multiple times so does such short-term environmental changes because if you open the door the, the the condition may go out of the limit isn't it so does such short-term environmental changes because of opening of the door accepted and WHO has given the guidance on that and WHO says that yes the short-term environmental changes due to opening the doors of the storage facility are accepted because it is completely unavoidable right having understood that what is the possible impact of temperature and humidity excursions to stability samples now that is something which is more important to understand 
and uh, these are the possible impact onto the product the loss of assay or potency of the product can be the impact the increase of impurity can be the impact separation of layers of liquid products is possible change in dissolution pattern of solid dosage is also possible discoloration of product is possible and even the microbial growth also can happen because of the excursion of the temperature and humidity now what action have to be taken if the chamber is out of tolerance we talked about the tolerance allowable tolerance for temperature and humidity but in case if now your temperature is not within the allowable tolerances what action you supposed to take now this part is very important and you must be 100% attentive for at least this section of the video so what you must be doing in case if you found that your chamber is out of the given conditions switch on your spare or additional stability chamber it is very important that you must have the spare chamber on the site with the intention if something happens wrong with your running chamber where the sample can be shifted and that is the purpose of having the spare or additional stability chamber so once you notice that the chamber has gone out of the order the temperature and humidity is beyond your allowable tolerances you can switch on your spare chamber so that it can attain the required condition over a course of time now as a part of a uh, root cause or to correct the flaw you may need some time isn't it and you can allow around 10 to 12 hours as per your site sop or the practice so that the root cause can be identified and the correction can be taken so that your chamber can be up and running but if the problem is not solved if the root cause is not identified if the chamber is not corrected for the flaw make sure at least within 24 hours you have to transfer the sample into another chamber which is maintained at the required condition at the required temperature and at the required humidity now what is the reference for this 24 hours within 24 hours it has been taken from the who guideline but in case uh, if you are not able to transfer the sample within 24 hours maybe, maybe because of the holiday weekly ops or any another concern you can conduct the impact assessment by using the critical product when the excursion is more than 24 hours or even if you are able to transfer the sample into a suitable stability chamber within 24 hours you can still decide to conduct the impact assessment even if the excursion is below 24 hours because if you miss this opportunity for the impact assessment and if in the next time points if the results are out of the spec or out of the trend you have actually lost the opportunity already so to avoid this situation you can still think if there are products inside the chamber which are highly susceptible for temperature change, humidity change, conduct the impact assessment and then move on. The product selected preferably must be sensitive or have last time point data on the border. Now, data on the border means or near to the specification. Maybe your specification for impurity is not more than 1.0%, isn't it? And for that particular product or for that particular batch, the result for the last stability time point is 0.9%. So you can uh, consider such a product for the risk assessment. Confirm whether the results are within the trend or not. So once you conduct the analysis, compare the last data point result and the newly identified result. And if the results are within the trend, you can say that there is no as such impact because of the excursions. Preferably, consider the chamber under breakdown after rectif rectification as a spare chamber for future use to avoid sample transfer activity. Now I am assuming that you have transferred the sample into a spare chamber now. So the chamber under breakdown has been rectified after let us say five days. It has been calibrated suitably. 
So what you are going to do? Are you going to again transfer the sample into that uh, rectified chamber? I suggest preferably you don't do this activity because see your chamber which is already a spare chamber is now running at your predefined storage conditions. Whatever chamber you just uh, uh, rectified, you know, you can label that chamber as a your spare chamber or the additional chamber so that you can avoid the sample transfer activity. The last point is also very important. Excursions that exceeds the defined tolerances for more than 24 hours should be described in the study report and their effects must be assessed. Now this is in accordance with the WHO guidelines. So whenever there are such events occurring and if the excursion has occurred beyond 24 hours, you know, such event has to be reported onto your stability report. Let us say if you do not have a available stability chamber at your site, that means if no spare or additional stability chamber is available or if the stability chamber got almost completely damaged. So what you can do? In this situation, the site must have a disaster management procedure to handle such a situation. And as a part of this disaster management procedure, the site must also identify any suitable service provider which can continue your stability incubation study. It may not be your own site but any another uh, service provider and there must be agreement available. In case if you have multiple sites, right, you must have the agreement with your another sites so that your samples can be shifted into those sites at the required storage conditions. Now, how do we select the products to assess the impact of the excursion? So, we talked about the analysis of impact onto the product and here is the small guidance on selection of the product. So, if the product is sensitive towards higher temperature, right? If your product is sensitive towards higher temperature, then you can take that product for the assessment. In case if the temperature has gone high or beyond your predefined levels product sensitive towards lower temperature so in case if the temperature has gone below your predefined limits then you can think of taking a product which are sensitive for the lower temperature like precipitation in case of injectables can be studied product sensitive towards higher humidity so the product which are prone to hydrolysis can be considered for the evaluation and the product sensitive towards lower humidity in case if your humidity has gone low uh, below its permissible limit then the products like uh, the sterile products packaged in a semi permeable container where there is a chance of water loss can be taken for the risk evaluation so i hope you must have found the presentation valuable and certainly this may help you in tackling the situations when the excursion in the temperature and humidity beyond permissible period has occurred. Thank you so much.